The 2013 Kenya National Rally Championship returns for round two, the KCB Nyeri Rally. After an exciting and action-packed opening round in Kajado, just south of the capital Nairobi, the crews headed up into the Central Highlands and Laikipia Plateau. Nestled between the snow-capped peak of Mount Kenya in the east and the Abadeh Mountains to the west, the small town of Nyeri will be the base for the rally. After the first open stages in Kajado, the teams would face a combination of high-speed sections and more technical stages as the route changed from the Laikipia Plains to the tighter, twisty mountain slopes. Any rain could transform the road into a skating rink and that would be a challenge for even the most skilled drivers. With a six-week break between the events, crews had had time to rebuild and prepare their cars and there will be several new cars at the start line. Baldur Chaga arrived in Nyeri off the back of a momentous win in Kajado, giving Subaru its first victory in eight years, having been a staunch Subaru driver throughout his career. He arrived in Nyeri with a brand new Mitsubishi Evo 10. I've done a little bit of testing, still needs a lot of getting used to. A lot of, it's very different to drive from the Subaru. It's actually from the UK and it was driven by a driver called David Bogie. Uh, more than that, I, I wouldn't know. And then it was completely stripped and rebuilt to, from scratch and that's when we got the car. Isa Amwari was relishing the chance to get behind the wheel of his ex-UK Evo 9 and was hoping to break into the top 10. Still learning the car. We know we'll, we'll get a lot of difficulties. We have to run it, we have to take it easy. I'm trying to improve slowly by slowly, step by step. Rajbir Rai had acquired a new Mitsubishi Evo 10 and, and would be navigated by Supi Soin, who had come out of retirement to guide the young driver as he got to grips with the handling of the new car. In the classic category, Geoff Bell had flown up from South Africa to compete in his Datsun 260Z, which he had driven to second overall on the 2011 East African Safari Rally and will be using several of the KNRC rounds to prepare for this year's Safari Classic. Uh, yeah, this is uh, hoping to do well in the Classic again, so um, need to get a bit of time behind the wheels, which uh, this obviously helps a lot. And there's nothing like real time behind the wheel. No, no amount of testing uh, does the same thing. Um, and it's also really good fun. I mean, it's got to be one of the best championships around in the world now. Defending champion Carl Tundo will be hoping to get his 2013 campaign back on track after retiring on the second stage of the Kajado Rally with a blown turbo. This is the beginning of the championship. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to it actually. I'm hoping it'll be a bit wet and muddy. Uh, the routes, see, it's okay. Um, there's a couple of sections in there that... Uh, It'll be quite nerve-wracking in our standard Group N cars, but other than that, it'll be uh, an interesting event, yeah. Reiki is an essential part of any rally. Crews will drive the route several times, making pace notes that navigators will use to guide the driver. Overnight rain could change the road conditions completely, forcing drivers to back off and drive by sight. As crews lined up for the start outside the KCB bank on Nyeri's High Street, Peter Horse and Bella Askin will be the first crew away under the system of rotating the top eight drivers so that the championship leader is not always fast on the road. Rally organizers had decided to run the event over two days. Starting on Saturday lunchtime, the crews would head to the spectator stage, run inside the Nyeri ASK Stadium. This would be repeated twice on Sunday. Stage 2 from Narumoro to Solio was a fast, flat-out straight road bordering the Solio Rhino Sanctuary. The crews will then do a short 15-kilometer section from Django to ASK, followed by service, before returning to the Green Hills Hotel for an overnight rest. Sunday would commence with a short stage from Mahigaine to Graceland before a long and challenging 53-mountain stage from Thigo to Narumoro. A repeat of the spectator stage was followed by the only service of the day. Stage 7 was a tight and technical stage in the Abadeh foothills from Kamakwa to Kimathi before a repeat of the Njengo stage and a final run through the spectator stage. The short spectator stage inside the ASK stadium was fast and smooth with several hairpins and sweeping bends to entertain the crowds. Quentin Mitchell got off to a great start. Three seconds faster than his nearest rivals, the nimble Impreza was better suited to the conditions on this tight stage. However, he dropped time on the Njengo stage and slipped down the leaderboard to 7th overall. Raji Baric went second fastest, keen to get a good result after crashing out of the opening round in his Evo 10. Ian Duncan, Alex Horsey and Kyle Tundo set identical third fastest times, a mere second off Baric's time showing how evenly matched the top drivers are. 
Izar Mirza was a surprise package on the opening stage, going seven fastest and beating Kavina, who was five seconds off the pace of the leader. Just Mangat set an identical time to Mirza, the Ugandan champion hoping for less punches on the second round. He was eighth fastest on the next stage, but his rally would come to an end after an accident on the road section at the end of the day. Baldev Chaga was finding his feet in his new Evo 10. The handling was very different to his old car and he was six seconds off the pace. He would need to settle in fast if he was to keep up with the crews in front. Jasprit Singh Chate was nine seconds slower around the Super Special than Mitchell, but soon found his rhythm in the next stage and climbed up to fourth by the rest hold. Rajbir Rai was just outside the top ten in his new Evo 10. He was enjoying the short stage and giving the crowds plenty of entertainment. Peter Hosu was quickest of the S-Class cars, but being fast out on the stage, he had dropped 11 seconds to Mitchell and was down in 14. Adnan Suhail was fastest on the two-wheel drives, keen to take every second out of his main rivals. He was 10 seconds faster than Dennis Wenda and Saminori, who set identical stage times. He would increase the gap by a further 28 seconds to take a comfortable lead by the rest halt. Ian Friston danced the little escort around the stage, the crowds loving the sideways action from the rear-wheel drive classics. Seven cars lined up at the start in the classic category and it was going to be an interesting battle. Geoff Bell was a little rusty after 18 months away from the competition but was happy to be back behind the wheel of his Z. He will drop more time to Friston in the short jungle stage. The second stage was cancelled after the drivers felt that the top average speeds would exceed safety standards so crews were rerouted to the start of stage 3. Ian Duncan started the stage in fourth but set a blistering time through the short 15km stage. He was 13 seconds faster than his rivals to end the day with an 8 second cushion. Baldev Chaga opened up the Evo 10 and went second fastest. Impressed with the car's handling, he was feeling confident and decided to push. He would end the day second after Mangat's retirement. Alistair Kavina was still nursing sore ribs but felt more comfortable in the car and set the third fastest time, climbing five places up the leaderboard to end the day in third. Raji Baric was being more cautious and backed off a little to ensure he got through the stage cleanly. He dropped down to fifth, 39 seconds down on Duncan. I think we just did a nice solid time, no risks, quite, I don't think we were very fast, so we'll see tomorrow, it's a long rally. So. Tundo was on the limit, determined to get back in front with a sluggish start. However, his overshoot on a junction cost the crew nearly 30 seconds and they would languish down in ninth, heading into the overnight rest hold. Alex Horsey switched from the Moto Moto pickup, which he had finished fourth on the opening round with, to the Evo 10. He was seventh fastest to end the day in eighth overall. Peter Hosey was opening the roads in the Motomoto Moto pickup and despite being cautious cleaning the road, he was back up in tenth overall. Onka Rai was back in his old N12 after the fire that destroyed the N16 in Kajado. The old car wasn't as quick and he was losing time to the leaders, ending the day down in 14th. With the level of competition so high, drivers couldn't afford to start slowly and despite being 10th fastest, Azar Anwar dropped 53 seconds to Duncan and will be hoping overnight rain will even out the playing field. In the two-wheel category, Saminori was pushing the little vits as hard as he could and was getting the better of Dennis Mwenda in the more powerful sprinter. However, he would end the day 54 seconds down on Adnan Suhail. Dennis was being cautious but would have to find some speed if he wanted to challenge Suhail for the class lead. In the classic class, defending champion Aslam Khan was off the pace. The Porsche driver couldn't match the times of Ian Friston and was over a minute down on the escort. Hardev Singh Sira was 4 seconds quicker than Khan in the stadium but dropped over 30 seconds to the Porsche driver on the Njengo stage, dropping him back to 4th in class. The cars headed back to the Green Hills Hotel for the overnight resort with an eye to the sky as the thunderclouds began to build up. Duncan had built up a comfortable overnight lead after two short stages. It was an early start as the crews gathered before dawn in Park Farme, ready to get the competition underway. The skies were clear but it had rained overnight, fresh snow on Mount Kenya giving a clear indication that the stages would be slippery. The start was delayed as the organizers debated whether to cancel the long fifth stage that had turned into a mud bath. Eventually, 
It was decided that the main event would run, but the two-wheel drive and classics will skip the stage for fear of getting bogged down. The crews headed to stage 4 not sure what the route had in store. Thankfully, it was still dry and fast and after a short delay, the cars were soon out of the section. Carl Tundo had 47 second deficit to make up on Duncan and was immediately on the attack claiming the joint fastest time with timid Kavanagh pulling back 9 seconds on the leader. Kavanaugh was jointed fastest and four seconds quicker than Chaga, moving up to second overall despite backing off for the jumps. Chaga was third fastest but with only a two second gap at the start of the stage, he now trailed Kavanaugh by two seconds. The car feels good, yeah, really nice on this uh, fast speed rough stuff as well. So yeah, let's see what happens in the long stage, I think that's the challenging one. Yeah. Duncan was slightly off the pace and had lost 9 seconds, but still held on to 9 seconds lead. It was getting tight at the top, it was still anyone's rally. I don't know whether we're awake or not, it felt a bit slow in places, we'll see. Not much mud out there? Nah, just the odd slippery bit, but nothing so serious. Quinton Mitchell was only a further two seconds behind Duncan in the Impreza but was concerned about the mud and water on the next stage. Peter Hosey was once again opening the road and would be the first to discover any new models that were not there on Reiki. Despite this, he still managed to go seventh fastest. Geoff Bell had had a good night's rest and set a fantastic time on the opening stage in the rear wheel drive to 60Z. He went 10th fastest, less than a minute down on Tundo and more than a minute faster than Freestone to take the classic lead. Alex Hossi lost almost a minute with the puncture on the opening stage. That was the first stage. A little bit puncturous. A little bit, oh yes, <laughs> His rally would come to an end in the following stage with a blown rear differential and the crew would be left stranded on the side of the road. Raji Baric's miserable season continued. He was forced to stop when the engine began to overheat. The pipe on the radiator mounting broke and despite stopping to let it cool and limping out the stage, their rally would end in CS5. Halfway through the first stage it started getting hot so we watched it, we switched off the anti-lag, it got even hotter so we stopped, found out there was a leak on the radiator um, on the top pin filled up some water, wait for it to cool down, went to the next stage and then it got so hot that we stopped. Um, nothing we can do. Fad Bari was finding his pace. The Mitsubishi driver was climbing up the leaderboard and was sitting just outside the top 10. Adnan Suhail was embroiled in a close battle with Saminori. The pair were only a second apart on this stage and with the long stage cancelled for the two-wheel drive cars, there was little room to recover from a mistake. Saminori was second in class and had increased the gap to Dennis Mwenda to over 30 seconds. There were several lady crews in the event. Samira Khan made a welcome return in her escort, going fourth fastest in class as she got comfortable back in the driver's seat. Stella Masharia had a lapse in concentration, spinning her impresa much to the delight of the crowd. The overnight rain had turned the fifth stage into a skating rink, making it almost impossible to stay on the road. Experience was going to play a large part as crews battled through the long 53-kilometer stage. Carl Tundo showed why he is the ringing champion. Smooth clean lines despite the mud meant that he was 43 seconds faster than his nearest rival. He quickly jumped into the lead, opening a 35-second advantage despite the tricky conditions. Quintin Mitchell went second fastest. The Impreza handled the mud well and the crew moved into a podium position ahead of Kavanaugh. Experience counts and Azar Anwar was in his element. The Evo 8 often struggles on the first stages but in these conditions Anwar was third fastest climbing up to fifth overall in the process. Baldev Chaga was still pushing hard in the Evo 10. A little too hard sometimes and was fortunate enough to escape from this off without any damage. He was fourth fastest and climbed up to second overall. Alistair Kavanagh struggled with the lack of brakes, spinning several times. The car stalled and he repeatedly lost time getting going again. He lost over a minute and 22 seconds and dropped down to fourth. 
Rally leader Ian Duncan had two punches on the stage, costing him nearly five minutes in total and plummeting him down the leaderboard to eighth overall. He would have to push hard on the final stages to recover championship points. Not, 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 not to those guys, but if we can get some, some places back. All right. Now you're pushing this section, then now you put I guess, it down. I guess we better go quickly. Frank Tundo had started off quietly in his new Evo 9, and despite this detour, his experience in these conditions meant that he went sixth fastest, two minutes slower than Carl, but fast enough to elevate him from 13th up to 6th overall. Jasprit Charter lost over four minutes sliding around in the mud, dropping him down the leaderboard to 7th place. Ben Moshemi caught Tajvir Rai, who was struggling in the slippery conditions. John Nganga fought his way through the stage, setting the 12th fastest time, climbing the leaderboard from 19th up to 12th in the process. In the S-Class, Mahesh Halai set the 11th fastest time. He was 7 minutes faster than Alistair Keith and now leads the class. He had also climbed to 11th overall with a commendable drive. Despite this spin, Zioka Waita set the 15th fastest time to move him up into second in the S-Class. It was good enough to move him up to 16th overall. The Chana brothers were keeping close company. Just Meat had caught and passed Jaswinder, whose S-Class title defense was not getting off to a good start and he was trailing a lie by six minutes, struggling to find a rhythm in the old Toyota. Isa Amwari's beautiful new paint job was taking a beating as he tried in vain to keep the car out of the ditches in the slippery conditions. Isar Mirza had got off to a flying start on the rally, but all his efforts were in vain as he got stuck for over an hour, tumbling down the leaderboard in the process. It was a struggle for the drivers further down the field, the slippery conditions making it almost impossible to stay on the road. The crews were relieved to make it through the treacherous stage and headed back to the showground for another run through the stadium's special stage. The overnight rain meant that the track was still wet for the top drivers and the times got progressively faster as the top surface of mud was cleaned. This meant that there were some unusual faces topping the timesheets. After the super special, the cars returned to the only service point of the day situated next to the stadium. There was a chance to inspect the damage after the long 53 km stage. Okay, fifth is probably not bad, but uh, you know we'd like to be further up, and the only way is to go to go harder. Right. And uh, it's taking a lot of risk, so I've been trying not to take risk. The action returns to stage seven, possibly the best stage on the rally. It was a tight, twisty mountain stage in the Abadea foothills, requiring concentration over the full 28 kilometers if you wanted to set a good time. Carl Tundo had been through the stage more than once, having decided that this would be where he would attack. The hard work paid off and he was over a minute faster than the rest of the field, extending his lead to almost two minutes over Baldev Chaga. Azar Anwar also enjoyed the more technical stage and went second fastest in the aging Mitsubishi. With Kavin out, he was now up to fourth overall. Baldev Chaga was a further 10 seconds down on Anwar, but with a comfortable cushion, to, he could afford to ease off a little. Determined to finish well, despite being weighed down on the leaderboard, Izar Mirza was fourth fastest. He had set several competitive times during the rally and will no doubt be disappointed not to finish in the top ten. Quinton Mitchell was fifth fastest despite dropping 1 minute 27 seconds to Tundo. He was still holding on to third, nearly a minute ahead of Azar Anwar. Jasprit Chate went sixth fastest. He had started the stage 43 seconds behind Frank Tundo, but he was 58 seconds quicker on the stage to move back into fifth overall. Frank Tundo could only manage tenth fastest, losing out to Chate, who was getting to grips with the new Evo 9 and enjoying a resurgence in his rallying career. Fad Bari enjoyed the tighter stage that was less dependent on top speed and set the seventh fastest time. He was on course for a good result, lying in seventh overall at the end of the stage before being disqualified for fueling illegally. 
John Nganga had quietly crept up the leaderboard and he had pulled back several minutes on the long fifth stage and was lying 10th overall in his Subaru Impreza. Geoff Bell went 8th fastest on the stage despite being in a rear-wheel drive car he was once again